Just for fun, I went ahead and counted up all 61 characters from the Scream franchise for the sole purpose of ranking each and every one of them from the worst to the best. So before we get into it, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit that like button, and let me know in the comments down below who you'd pick as your favorite Scream character. Let's get into it. Okay, now I should just say that with the 61 characters, I've pretty much included everyone here. The main criteria for what I would consider being a character as part of this tier list is that you should at least have a name. Hi, Gail Weathers, author of the Woodsboro Murders. So don't expect to see like the bitchy cheerleaders in the first movie or the film class students played by Joshua Jackson. There might be like one or two that I left out. And quite frankly, if I couldn't remember who they were, then they shouldn't be on this list. But more or less like everyone on here, at least like for a diehard Scream fan, you would know who that is. So first up, we have Officer Richards, who according to the internet, his full name name is Andrew Richards. I don't know if that's true or not. I think that someone just like submitted some fake information. But anyway, Officer Richards is the older of the two. We don't really get very much from these characters other than like a really awesome death scene. But regardless of that, I'm just gonna put him in just die already. Angelina. I, I know a lot of people don't care for this character, but I'm gonna put her in memorable. I think she served the position of red herring very well. And as a lot of us know, at this point, she was supposed to be the second killer before the studio nixed that idea and just made it Roman. Anthony Perkins, or Deputy Perkins. I'm going to say redundant because the cop characters in these movies don't really have a whole lot to do. He got a little more flair because he got a flashy death scene, but, you know, some cringy dialogue too. Principal Hembry. Principal Hembry. I'm going to say he's memorable. Probably not the most memorable part of the first movie, but we'll see where he goes. I'm going to put him here for now. Be Bianca Burnett, played by the late, great Carrie Fisher. I'm gonna put her in memorable. This was a great character. I would have appreciated seeing a larger role for her in this movie rather than just a cameo. You could have gotten rid of like several of the stab cast members and made this a full-fledged Scream 3 character. Billy Loomis, I'm gonna say essential because obviously he's one of the killers, one of the better killers, if not the best. Maybe I'll move him to untouchable, but right now we'll, we'll put him in essential. Sheriff Burke. Uh, you know, I'm gonna say redundant, but the thing is with him, like, he is a really good character. I, like, he disappears in the second half of Scream, and we never see him again. Unless, I don't know if he shows up at the end when Dewey's being loaded onto the ambulance, I can't remember. But he did have some, like, really snappy moments there when he was talking to Billy's dad, and, and I appreciated that. Casey Becker, um obviously essential. You can't have Scream without that character or that scene. Possibly one of the best kills and death scenes and even like the opening scene kill of any horror movie. Charlie Walker. Charlie. I'm gonna say redundant. Charlie's a bit of a dud for me. I, I think he's the worst killer. So I'd say he doesn't really add anything new. I wouldn't even say he's memorable. Chloe. And yes, we, had, we do have stab characters here. I'm gonna put Chloe in Just Die already because I hate the opening to scream for and anything to do with the fake outs. Like it was fun the first time I saw the movie, but every time I've seen it since, I'm just kind of like, can we just get into the movie here? Christine Hamilton is the character's full name. I'm gonna say redundant. Um, although no, she's not memorable. She had a good presence and definitely like a good death scream. But other than that, like that whole scene in general is pretty forgettable. Cece Cooper is, memorable. This is a memorable character. And it's interesting because Sarah Michelle Gellar in Scream 2 is like on an island of her own. She doesn't really have anything to do with any of the other characters. I do think that this character would have been elevated a little bit more had it been established that she had a connection with Sydney. They could have even eliminated either Cece or Hallie and just combined that into one character. And that would have given the story a little bit more weight. Cotton Weary. Cotton Weary. Oh, I'm gonna say essential. I maybe I'll move him to untouchable. I uh, that's a hard one because you know he did turn out to be such a throwaway character by the beginning of Scream Three. I just feel like for someone who doesn't really have all that much screen time in the franchise, he made such a huge impact, and that's a great deal due to Liev Schreiber as an actor. Derek. 
Feldman is redundant. He never really added anything to the story for me. Plus, you know, he did the whole song and dance in the cafeteria, which, you know, it is what it is. Dewey is untouchable. Who would have known that this would have been not only a character to survive, but then like go on and appear in four more movies after that? Because like he doesn't have a huge part in the first movie, but he really has emerged as the heart of like the core group. And that's kind of what makes him unique because like he adds something to the story that the other characters don't have. At this point, it's pretty hard to imagine a Scream movie without Dewey. I kind of want him to be in every Scream movie. Like it should just be a thing. Like if the Scream franchise was like the Fast and the Furious, you know, it's all about family. Gail Weathers, obviously untouchable. I think that Gail is probably the most complex character of the entire franchise. I definitely think that she has the most interesting arc because, you know, from one movie to the next, she has so much character growth. And again, like with Dewey in the first movie, like this was such a minor role and just the fact that you know she went on to be one of the survivors and is basically now a staple to be in every movie. Now we have Gus Golds, the drama teacher, who just has the one scene in Scream 2. I'm gonna say memorable. This is David Warner, after all. You know, he was in The Omen. For what little we do see of him, I think that like his scene in the movie is such a huge turning point for Sydney's character because you know she has that whole speech about like I'm a fighter. And he kind of drew that out of her. Hallie. McDaniel. I'm gonna say redundant, and I feel bad for, for putting her there, but she doesn't really, like, again, this, because this could have been a thing where, like, her and Cece were merged into one character. You know, I don't get a lot of depth from her, you know, if you compare to, like, a Tatum from Scream 1, where that relationship, you know, felt like a true friendship who've been friends for years since they were little kids. Hallie is just like a character who's friends with Sydney out of convenience uh, of the fact that they were, you know, selected to be roommates. Hank Loomis, uh, just die already. I don't know. <laughs> He's barely in the movie uh, of Scream 1. But I do like that he gets a cameo in Scream 3 in the videotape. But uh, other than that, he's just like a schmuck in a tie. Jennifer Jolie, AKA Judy Jurgenstern, as much as I would like to put her in Untouchable, I think she's just essential. Scream 3 would not be what it is without Parker Posey. Like she's my favorite part of that movie, hands down. It's funny because like Scream 3 is so campy that this is a character that could not exist in Scream 1, 2, or 4. So that's kind of like what would keep her from being an untouchable character. And obviously like they just unceremoniously killed her off at the end. It's interesting though, because like as soon as she died, the movie switched gears and then got all serious for the final act. So I always saw that as like kind of a metaphorical thing that like you had to kill off the most ridiculous character of this movie for it to like get back on track. Jenny Randall, uh, just die already. Um, again, it's just part of this cluster of random female characters at the beginning of Scream 4. She doesn't really add anything to it for me. I also don't really like that they reshot that opening scene to make her the prominent character out of like the two of her and Marnie. Not that Marnie is anything special either, but I think that the scene that they did with Marnie who lived a little longer was a lot more interesting interesting. Jill Roberts. Um, I might get a lot of shit for this. I'm going to say memorable. I think that Jill as a character, and this is kind of like the duality of the killer and who they pretend to be, because I think that Jill as the killer is hysterical. I love that, she, you know, she has that moment and just gets to like beat the shit out of herself. But Everything about Jill, the character, like Jill, the cousin of Sydney, is just so underwhelming because when you look back on the movie and just watch these scenes of her, there's barely a character there. At least like when she does get to fly off the rails, she does it in a very memorable way, but everything else like leading up to that point is very bland for me. I also wanted to point out that, you know, I've done character rankings in the past for these individual movies and I've done like ghost face rankings in the past and those videos were all made like a long time ago. Like opinions change, facts and like collecting data changes too. So you can expect like there to be some contradictions here if you're going back and looking at old videos. So, you know, I will do 
do another Ghostface ranking probably after the new movie comes out. Even when I did that video, like I more so used a rubric rather than giving it my personal opinion. So when I do a new Ghostface ranking, that will be my personal opinion because Jill is not my favorite killer and she never has been. Joel Jones, which I think it's funny because like him and Kenny both have the same name. I'm gonna say he's memorable. He's actually one of my favorite parts of Scream 2. Very underrated. You don't hear enough about this character. He has the distinction of being like the smartest person in any of these movies because he he knows when it's getting bad and he has the common sense to get the hell out of Dodge. I also think that Dwayne Martin, who plays him, like is really funny. He had really good comedic timing. That whole bit with Hallie, that was all improv. Did you get that all deal? Yes, I got that off here. John Milton, I'm gonna say just die already. I mean, it is Lance Henriksen playing him, who's like science fiction royalty, but you know, this is such an awful character. Detective Wallace, uh, who according to the internet's name is Joshua Wallace. And I don't know if that's because the actor's first name is Josh, but I'm gonna say memorable because this guy's just really funny. I, I loved his like little sarcastic barbs with everyone. Judy Hicks, uh, I'm gonna say memorable. She's not my favorite, but I do really love that scene uh, with her and Sydney because that is creepy as hell. And I think that they did a really good job of making that creepy because like according to the screenplay, it wasn't supposed to be like that. So Wes Craven delivered on that and Marley Shelton, who's no stranger to the horror genre, Valentine, uh, Grindhouse, and who knows, like maybe she'll be elevated after the new movie. So we'll see. But right now I'm going to say memorable. Kate Roberts, just die already. This character didn't even need to be in the movie. She barely had a scene and a half. I know that there was like another scene early on at the book signing where you can actually see her. She's there, but they cut it out for some reason. And she is in a lot more scenes that also were cut out that are in the extended cut. But as it is, they could have just removed her altogether and made up some like story that she was out of town or something. Like just like the parents are never around in these movies. Why does Kate have to be there? Kenny, Kenny Jalen. I'm going to say memorable because, you know, he there's not a lot of deaths in the first movie and he's one of them. But, you know, he's also just like such a lovable and unfortunate character as well, just with how like awful Gale is to him. But I love that his like whole shtick is that he's just always snacking because like I relate to that. Kirby Reed. Um, I'm gonna say essential and honestly I would probably put her in memorable and I know that like again I'm contradicting myself from previous character ranking videos because Kirby's not really that great of a character when you really think about it. You know, I've said in the past that she's final girl material and I definitely think that Hayden Panettiere is. I think that like Hayden Panettiere elevates this role to something much bigger than it is. But if you were to like compare Kirby to Sydney in Scream 1, like it's it's night and day. Kirby doesn't have these moments where like her best friend Olivia has just been murdered. And rather than like being affected by that and like, you know, really taking a step back and, and assessing the situation, she's doing stupid things like getting drunk and flirting with people that she's never flirted with before. So that's just like to me is not like final girl energy. I put her in essential because of Hayden Panettiere, but honestly, like I think that that's the one factor that's separating her from being a memorable character. Chief Lewis Hartley, uh, just die already. I just think that this, like out of all the authority or like police figures, that we've seen in any of these movies, he is the most useless. Basically all of his scenes are him being undermined by other characters. His department would know nothing if it wasn't for Gale and Dewey being there to point out all the clues to them. And you know, for someone locking down a campus and still like having all this like chaos going on around it, you know, he's not doing a great job. Lois, uh, sorority sister Lois, I'm gonna say redundant. Like this is Rebecca Gayhart in a thankless rule. I think that she does much better, you know, once we get to urban legend, Jawbreaker even. I like the novelty of it being the two sorority sisters, but that could have been one character. I'm not saying that it should have been, but I mean like one of them was going to be like the less interesting one and that's kind of Lois. Detective Kincaid, just die already. I'm not gonna say that this is not an interesting character, like he has his moments, but you could have taken him out of the movie 
and it would have been the same movie. He was just like really shoehorned in there to give Sydney this potential love interest. Even in the finale, he just comes in and literally adds nothing. Like he's more of a hindrance, really. Because of him, Roman gets the gun that he shoots Sydney with. And then the scene at the end with him staying with Sydney, having the cast on and the bowl of popcorn and being like, we're gonna watch a movie. Ah, uh, Marnie Cooper. You just die already. Again, this is just like the same thing with, with this like all the random girls at the beginning of Scream 4. Nobody even mentions them again, like other than when Jill's like, why is Jenny Randall calling me? At least with Casey Becker, like her murder had a profound effect on the rest of the movie. Martha Meeks. Um... Honestly, I'm gonna say redundant because she's kind of a plot contrivance just with how they had to get Randy into Scream 3 and just like magically have his sister show up on the lot at like the right place and right time that the characters were. It was just one of those things that didn't make any sense. Maureen Evans, I'm gonna say memorable because she has one of the best death scenes in any of these movies. Not just for the fact that it's like being stabbed to death in a crowded theater, but just like how well Jada Pinkett sells that, just like with the veins popping out of the foreheads and the eyes bugging out. And just in terms of the character, I actually really appreciate her banter with Phil. I thought that all that stuff at the beginning of the movie was fun. Maureen Prescott. Um, and this m might be a little bit of a cheat because this is a character who's already dead. I'm gonna say she's memorable. Um, I don't think she's quite essential. I think that Scream 3, again, like there could have been a different approach there. But I like I kind of like it. I like I like the whole mommy dearest psycho vibe thing that they've got going on with her. It's amusing to me. Mickey Altieri, and this is one that I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on, but I don't give a shit. And that's going to be essential because I think that Mickey is vastly underrated as not only a killer, but a character as well. As a killer, I think that he, more than anyone else, with the exception of maybe Billy, knew how to really get under Sydney's skin and did it in such a deceptive and manipulative way. Billy got to her through her heart, but Mickey got in her head and that really messed her up with everything after Scream 2. And then as a character, I know that like a lot of people, you know, complain that Mickey disappears from the movie for 45 minutes. But I think when you look at the characters, you need to ask yourself about the screen time. Is it quantity screen time or is it quality screen time? Because I think that every moment that he is on screen, he does exactly what he needs to be doing. And I think that if, you know, he had showed up for more scenes in that 45 minute gap, that could have been superfluous stuff that, you know, really took away from his killer reveal in the end. Sister Murphy, um, I'm gonna say memorable, uh, just because she's one of the funniest parts of Scream 2. Portia de Rossi in general is just a great comedian and has wicked timings. I know she doesn't really add much to the story, you know, as compared to like characters like Derek and Hallie, but I mean, her lines are just so quotable. Hi! No, I really mean that. Hi. Mrs. Loomis. Um, I'm gonna say memorable because, you know, she does deliver. She's also, you know, in my opinion, probably like the best twist of who the killer turns out to be, but she just like gives this soliloquy at the end. Neil Prescott, um... I think he's memorable. I don't want to say he's redundant because, you know, he does serve a purpose and he's not really in the franchise a lot. Like he just has a few scenes. But again, like this is a character who is important to Sydney, so he should be important to us as well. At least he is for me. Of course, there was the scene in Scream 4 that was cut where Dewey and Gale discuss his funeral. So I, you know, he might be dead. That was never really made officially canon. But if there is a way to ever bring him back, I would like to see some more Sydney and dad screen time. Olivia Morris. Uh, I'm gonna say redundant. She has a really like spectacular death scene, but uh, I think that there is a character there that's more interesting because, you know, she has this whole bit where she likens Sydney to the angel of death and doesn't want to be anywhere near her or have anything to do with her. And that's an interesting angle that we never really see in any of the other movies or characters. So she's kind of the only one at this point, but as it stands, she's just kind of cannon fodder. Phil Stevens, I'm gonna say memorable because I mean, A, he has a 
really memorable death, but also just, again, because of the banter with Maureen. Like, I, I like watching these characters. I feel bad for them. Rachel from Stab 7, I guess, uh, just die already. Um, just really annoying, and, you know, she's criticizing the Scream movies, essentially, so that's grounds for death. Randy Meeks, uh obviously untouchable. And I think that, like I was saying before, like this is another character who brings something to the table that nobody else does. And that's his smarts, his knowledge of the genre. And you know, they try to resurrect this quality in other characters, like they made Detective Kincaid movie savvy, but I don't really think that he knew all that much. Even Charlie and Robbie and Kirby in Scream 4, like with them, it just felt so programmed, like it was part of the script. Whereas with Randy, it just feels like it's the very essence of his character. In that regard, I definitely think that it was a mistake killing him off. But at the same time, they should have weighed the risk and reward factor. And I think that it was more so a risk than anything that, you know, paid off at the time. But I, I feel like moving forward, you know, the franchise really missed him and you could feel it. Rebecca Walters, Sydney's uh, PR assistant lady. I'm gonna say redundant. Here's the thing. I think that this character, if like she's such a Scream 3 holdover, like if, if this was a character in Scream 3, she would have been memorable for sure. Because even Alison Brie, I enjoy her performance, but I just, the character, it just, it didn't fit in with this movie for me. Detective... Richard Andrews, Detective Richard Andrews. Where did I put the other guy? Just Die Already? I'm gonna put him in Just Die Already for the same reasons as I put the other one in. But there is a scene of them in the cafeteria, and this is just like a background thing if you notice. And when Derek does the whole song and everyone stands up and they're clapping, you can see this guy start to applaud along with everyone until the other guy kind of like glares at him and he just sheepishly stops and hangs his head. It's quite common like all the little things that you will notice in these movies if you're paying close attention. Robbie Mercer, I'm gonna say redundant. I don't know. He's all right. I just think that like Scream 4 is really lacking in likable characters. That's that's the biggest thing with Scream 4 is like none of these characters are likable. None of them feel like real people. At least in Scream 3, like those didn't feel like real people, but they were funny. And I feel that the characters in Scream 4 are not funny. Roman Bridger. I'm gonna say memorable. I mean, even though that he's like such a huge part of everything that happens, I, I don't want to say that he's essential because I mean, Scream 3 could have been so many different things. It didn't have to be this brother-sister plot line. And just the fact that they they really fudged it by not giving him any scenes with Sydney earlier on. I have softened to this character a bit over time. There are redeeming qualities for sure. But I think like, especially in terms of like, if you're comparing him to Mickey, like Roman disappears from the movie for like large chunks of time. Like he's, he shows up, but his scenes all throughout don't really do anything. Like they're more of just like comedic bits. He's just there to like be obnoxious and complain. Deputy Ross Haas, Let's just put him in just die already. I, I don't even know what to, to think of Scream 4 characters anymore, to be honest. I. Uh, Sarah, darling, um, I'm gonna say redundant, even though this is a character that I would like to say just die already. She does offer some comedy before, you know, there's some great one-liners and just like the way that she kind of like checks her boob in the mirror when she's on the phone with Roman. But as a character and a death scene, like I feel nothing for this person. Like she is painted as such an unlikable bitch that there's no redeeming her here. Sherry from Stab 6, um, um, as much as I said, like the other characters uh, from the beginning are just die already, I think I'm gonna put her in redundant. Out of all like the people in that opening, like I actually like that scene of her and Trudy better than the one with Chloe and Rachel and Jenny and Marnie. They just have better chemistry. They're talking about things that are more interesting, just like more referential to the horror genre. Sydney Prescott, uh, redundant. No, I'm just kidding. Untouchable. This shouldn't be a surprise because she's one of the best final girls ever. I'd say top two, top three. She just has all the important qualities that you need 
in a final girl. She's smart, she's tenacious, she shows empathy towards people. Like with Gail, we get to see her evolve over time with all these movies. She's kind of like the predator of the Scream franchise, you know, just going in there, going to battle against all these ghost faces, and then coming out of it with like more knowledge and skill on how to kill them in the next movie. If I had to point out a downside, it's probably Scream 3 and 4, just because of the limited screen time she received in those movies, where I feel that like Sydney hasn't always been presented as a character who is a very expressive with her growth because Sydney does internalize a lot of what's going on with her. But at the same time, that does make her an interesting character because these four movies are just very specific points in her life. And every time that Nev Campbell comes back, you can see a character who, you know, has lived and she knows that like this story of her survivalhood and just and fighting all these killers doesn't define who she is. And that is what I love about her. Okay, Steve Orth. I am gonna say memorable, even though, you know, he doesn't really have any lines other than some like muffled cries, but even like for what little he gets to do, like he is quite impactful. Steven Stone, Protective Services, uh, played by Patrick Warburton. I'm gonna say memorable. Not like a particularly great, character by any means, but I just in terms of like the Scream 3 campiness and, and comedic edge, he's firing on all cylinders there. Stu Mocker, Stu Mocker, I'm gonna say essential. I know a lot of people talk about Stu, like he could come back and be some sort of mastermind. And I don't think that that would happen. But again, like with Kirby, I think that this is a character who is really elevated because of the performance by the actor playing them, because this this was a role, if you read the script for the first Scream, it was a very nothing character. Like he was just presented as Billy's sidekick. And Matthew Lillard came in and delivered such a nuanced performance that, you know, people go crazy for this character. And this is like so many people's favorite character. And I get that, I understand that. He's just not mine, nor is he my favorite killer by any means, because to me, he's just sort of the comedic foil. Another essential character is going to be Tatum Riley. And I think that like this is sort of a pattern at this point, like all of the characters from the original are gonna be really high up here. And like I was saying before, Tatum is this character. You, you feel this history. These are people who have been probably friends since kindergarten. And with Tatum especially, it's just this like this level of protectiveness that she has for Sydney that we haven't seen in any other character other than Dewey. I don't think that she's perfect. You know, she does have these little bits here and there where she does like say some insensitive things like when they're on the porch, but she's still a well-meaning character. And out of anyone who's been Sydney's friend, she's been shown to be the one who has her back the most. I also think that if Tatum was a character in like any other horror movie, like she could have been the final girl in anything. It's just because she's standing next to Sydney that she unfortunately didn't make it. Tom Prince, uh, I'm gonna say just die already. This is like maybe the worst of the Stab 3 cast. He's just like another one that just showed up to die. And he also has like the goofiest death scene of that movie. Tori Spelling, yes, I included Tori Spelling as a character because she does play herself in this. And I'm gonna say memorable because it's like, how could you not watch Tori Spelling reenact Sydney's scenes from Scream and not find that hilarious. I almost wish that she came back for Scream 3. I mean, I don't know if that means that she would have died like Angelina. I think that would have been like crazy, but I still would have loved it. But if I had to deduct points from this character, I'd say it's because she spoils the plot of the movie while doing press for it. Well, I play this young girl, Sydney Prescott, who discovers that her boyfriend's this crazy serial killer. Trevor Sheldon, uh, Jill's ex-boyfriend, Scream 4, just died already. I couldn't tell you anything about this guy. Obviously, this is another character who got cut down a lot. So many of his scenes were taken out of the movie, especially the ones that we see with Jill at the hospital. I think that if they had been left in, it might have, you know, elevated him to a redundant character, but just as it stands, he can just die already. Trudy, uh, I guess like with Sherry, I'll, I'll 
put her in the redundant category um, because I still, I like their repartee. You know, had they just done that scene, but if it had just been the entire block of time devoted to those two characters, I would have liked it way more than what they did with the fake out openings. And Tyson, uh, like his other stab three cast members, I'm just gonna say redundant. I think that he had some funny one-liners here and there, but mostly he's just kind of forgettable. Okay, so now that I've tiered them all, let's start ranking them. Out of the worst, I'm gonna say that Kate is the worst because I mean, like, she's just so pointless. I'd say that like Hoss is definitely better than Officer What's His Nuts. And I like Hoss better than Rachel. You know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say that I'd rather see Hoss over Marnie. This is like the battle of like, who's the worst of the uh, police figures. I would put Chief Hartley there. I'd say that Marnie is better than Chief Hartley, but not Rachel. I actually move Milton up to like the top of the Just Die already. Let's actually move Hank Loomis down really low here. I'm gonna put him below Tom Prince. And Jenny Randall, I definitely worse than Marnie. What's difficult is that like these characters, like Marnie and Jenny and Rachel and Chloe and Trudy and Sherry, they're so like intrinsically linked together in my mind because they're just they're just one character of one part of a scene. I'm gonna put Chloe above uh, Officer Richards. You know, she did get her little moment and I guess she is one of the killers. She's one of the ghost faces. And with Richards, I know I'll keep him there. I'll put him above Kincaid because he does have that like heroic moment. <laughs> Car, you I think that I much prefer Tyson over these guys, at least. I'd say that Sarah Darling can, can go at the bottom here. Who's the best of this category? I'd, you know what? I'd say that Hallie is probably the best. You know, she's bordering on the line of memorable and redundant. I definitely think that Sheriff Burke is better than Perkins. How much do I like Charlie? I'd say I prefer Charlie over Perkins, but you know what? I like Christine better than Charlie. And I like Derek better than Charlie. Do I like Derek better than Christine? Probably, because Christine, you know, for her limited time, doesn't really do all that much. And I like Lois better than Perk. Like the cop characters in these movies are just so pointless. You know what? I like Martha Meeks there. Olivia, I like Olivia better than Charlie. I think I prefer Rebecca over Lois. And I might even prefer her over Charlie too. You know, I just think like Perkins is, he may as well have just been in Die already. That Bruce Willis line, it's just, it's so cringy. I'm gonna say that I like Tyson better than Rebecca though. I think that Robbie's a better character than Charlie for sure. You know what? I like Sherry a lot more than I like Trudy. She's like, I guess like the sarcastic one of the two. I'm gonna move Sherry up to, I'm gonna move her actually, actually, let's move her above Derek. She's just fun. Trudy, on the other hand, you know, she's all right. Maybe I'll put her above Rebecca, but is Robbie that bad? I like Robbie better than Rebecca. Should Christine be that high though? Yeah, I'm good with this. I'm gonna leave that there, memorable. I'd say that Steve, could be at the end just because he is on the forgettable side of, of being memorable. I definitely like Steven Stone better than Tori Spelling here. I don't think that I like Roman better than him though. Also Sydney's dad, maybe I'll move him down. Okay, I think Mrs. Loomis actually should be most memorable, get over there. The most memorable of the memorable. Maureen Prescott. I feel like this is another one, I just wanna like put her with Roman cause they're like the same person. Cause I mean, we're not really doing Maureen Prescott here. We're doing like ghost Maureen Prescott and ghost Maureen Prescott is both a figment of Sydney's imagination and just some like smoke and mirrors that's orchestrated by Roman. Uh, Kenny, I think I like Kenny better than Murphy. We'll leave Kenny there. Kenny's a sweetheart. Maureen. Evans. Let's just move her up here for now. I think I like her better than Angelina. Do I like Judy better than Kenny though? Um, no, I don't. Let's put her there. Is she better than Roman? Actually, no, no. 
I'm gonna put Judy there below Tori Spelling. <laughs> Detective Wallace. This guy, I'm gonna move him up though. I, I like him better than Angelina for sure. Joel, um, you're going right to the almost front there. Jill, I think that like, you know, Jill's memorable, but like all the things I said before, I'm pretty confident with that spot. That's that's a good spot for Jill. Uh, Himbury, Himbury, definitely above Angelina. Oh, Carrie Fisher is actually, she's gonna go there. She's going above Detective Wallace, uh, just in terms of Scream 3 characters. Um, Cece, I'm gonna put Cece. I'm gonna put Cece here, just below Maureen. Gus, Gus. Um, uh, I'm sorry to put Gus so low. I'm gonna put Gus here. Actually, no, no. Um, Gus is going higher than Gus is. Gus is better than Roman. What's interesting about characters like Gus is that they inform Sydney of who she is as a character. I'd say Angelina is okay. Angelina definitely is not better than Tori Spelling. So Angelina might actually be second to last here. But do I want to leave Neil Prescott there? That's the question. And I do. So, okay, let's move on. So essential. And I don't know if I want to move anyone up. I think that Billy definitely should be at the top of that tier. Maybe Jennifer is at the end of the essential list with Kirby. Because, you know, these characters, they're great characters in the films that they're in. Like, they're, like, Kirby, probably the best part of Scream 4. But these characters, like, they're essential to the franchise. And actually, I'm gonna... I'm gonna move Mickey above Cotton, just because, you know, Cotton is a great red herring. Probably the best red herring that we've had in the franchise. But he is not better than the psychological damage that Mickey inflicts upon Sydney. And Stu, I'm gonna say that Stu is above Cotton, because with Stu, like, not only, like, as a killer is a great character, but just even as Stu, the person, before the the mask comes off, just such a great character. And I, I do think that Casey, would be here just because like her death scene and, and all that, like everything about that, even though there's not really much of a character there that we know about, just like everything that happens is just like amazing in terms of just like what it did for not only this franchise, but the horror genre as a whole. I think that I'd probably put Tatum below uh, Casey and above Mickey, um, just cause I do like Tatum a lot. And I think that I would, probably put Jennifer above Kirby as well. Okay, this is a dilemma here. Who do I like better, Cotton or Jennifer? I'm gonna have to say that Cotton is better character than Jennifer. Like I love Jennifer, hysterical in Scream 3, but Cotton is just so good. Liev. Okay, so yeah, that's gonna be that order. And then, okay, this is fairly easy to figure out. I'm gonna say Dewey is the fourth place. He's always like, he's the, the stalwart you can depend upon. Like he's always the same character. Lovable, goofy, sincere, warm-hearted, just an overall like great person and definitely deserves to have survived both those knives to his back. I'm gonna say Randy is gonna be, or do I put Dewey over Randy? Actually, yeah. I, I'm gonna say that Dewey is better than Randy because I think that Dewey is a more complex character than Randy. We just didn't get enough time to see other sides of, of this character. And I blame that entirely on their like reasoning to kill him off. I think that if we had seen him, if he had been like stuck around for another movie without, you know, showing up in video form, I would be willing to put Randy above Dewey. I mean, I didn't want to be cliche, but clearly the big three are gonna be in the top three. And then with Sydney and Gale, I actually, I put Gale at first. Gale is my favorite character. Just because of all of her layers and seeing how far she comes from that nasty biatch in the very first movie, she's just a very flawed and human character. I think that her overall arc is just a little bit more developed than Sydney's. Like a lot of Sydney's development kind of takes place off screen and that kind of 
hinders her just a little bit for me. Now that's it. If you guys want to check out some other Scream related content, including the individual movie rankings, I have all of those right over here, as well as my predictions for who the killer is going to be in the new movie. Until next time, I've been Zach Cherry, and I'll be right back.